Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a an engine video, I guess you could say. Um, this will be likely, depending on how I do it, a project video of sorts. Um, I originally filmed an unboxing for this engine, but um, I didn't notice the damage until now. And I just wanted to go through it. So basically, this is a... Let me get the box here. A Hallmark Santa Fe uh, Class 2507-280. This is a really nice little model. I bought it from Trains, T-R-A-I-N-Z, uh, on eBay.com, uh, on eBay. Uh, it was an auction, and I won it for $180. Now, after shipping and tax and everything, it ended up being like 200 something but that's still pretty solid for an engine like this, especially with a really nice paint job, as you can tell. Um, I'm going to first go through well, the damage, and just quickly go through the engine, and then afterwards, I'll explain what I'm going to do to it, ultimately. So, uh, this is, as I said, uh, number engine number 2522. Uh, it's a pretty nice engine, actually. The paint, as I said, is really good, actually. Um, it it could be better. I'm not saying it can't be. You can see there's kind of a, a gritty texture to it. Right there. Um, but overall, and also the fact that they use white decals instead of the silver decals that Santa Fe technically should be, uh, you know, using. Um, but overall, I think the paint job is enough to not warrant a new paint job, because I hate painting engines, to be honest. Um, but anyways, so, uh, what is wrong with this engine? So, uh, trains, uh, they, they, <laughs> their packaging is not the best. So, this is the second engine in a row that I got that is damaged. The first engine I got uh, yeah, the, the previous engine was a PFM United Pennsylvania L1S, and that engine, uh, first off, they shipped me just the engine without the box, which is, or just, just the box, no engine, which I found very amusing because the box was very light, um, and then they shipped me the engine separately, and what they did, what they did was they coupled the engine and tender together and wrapped it so they were, you know, sitting next to each other instead of separately, which you should always wrap these things separately, and what happened was, the drawbar wasn't in place, and so the engine would just slam to the tender repeatedly during shipping. And they use FedEx because go figure. Um, and what happened was the tender deck was completely mangled. The st stirrup steps were just broken off, and um, the entire yeah the the, the entire deck plate was just like you know right here. It was just like pushed inwards um, and just bent out of shape as hell. And the coupler box and obviously everything was also broken off because it was again pushed against the end of the box. Um, so, that was a very questionable packaging, uh, job. Anyways, um, and that wasn't a great experience, but I figured I'd give trains a second chance, hoping, hopefully, uh, hoping that it was a fluke. Um, and then I get this engine. So, this engine on, on, you know, at first looks really good, and that's why I didn't notice it when I was first unboxing the engine. Uh, but, if you look closely at the pilot here, it is pretty messed up. So if you look from the side here, you can see the pilot deck, which should be flush, is just completely bent upwards and also twisted a bit. Um, you can see that there's some paint chipping off the steam chest or pistons, whatever you call that, back there. Um, and so the pilot deck is just basically twisted upwards. You can actually see it a bit better on this side. Sort of. You can see that it, there, sh there shouldn't be a gap there. <laughs> You can see how the thing is sideways. Um, additionally, obviously, the, uh, the pilot, if you could tell, is bent downward. The sun is very bright. Holy crap. Um, the pilot deck, obviously, the pilot, as you can see, is bent downward. The coupler is very low on this thing as a result. And then, because the pilot has been pushed upwards, the ladders, as a result, has been pushed downwards. Um, because it's supposed to be sandwiched between the running board and the pilot, and if the pilot board is raised, then the ladder has to be bent downwards. And um, on this side, you can see how it's not really, it should be forward, it should be, you know, mounted at the really edge of the running board, but it's pushed backwards, and it also has a huge gap. But that one's actually okay, it's mostly, well, it's not really okay, but then this one's the one that's really messed up. And you can tell that the pilot's mounted, or soldered to the, uh, the, the ladders are soldered to the pilot, because you can see the exposed solder joints, which have been, you know, just basically pushed out um i don't know if i could get a good angle of this but like yeah you can see where's that pointer here it is you can see right there yeah you can see how the the ladder is just free floating 
off the uh yeah you can see how the pilot the, the ladders is kind of broken off there as well as this one too which i can show you from it's too dark but basically yeah you can see how the ladder here is just broken off in the front here so what this means is that and i really hate this is this is a painted engine and you really can't fix solder joints without stripping at least the area around it uh, in order to fix a solder joint because uh, obviously you can't you can't solder on a painted piece um, so ideally the best way to fix this is to strip the entire pilot area um, and the steam chest because the paint got messed up back there and uh, fix all the solder joints and you know make you know make everything right and then repaint it but that is just such a it takes so much time I might go for the lazy route and simply just use glue um, and then also just use a brush and paint some black paint like basic acrylic paint on those areas which is the easy way out but it's definitely not the best way out um, it's definitely not preferred for me I would have much rather had you know a, a, a model in one piece instead of this thing but um you got to work with what you got right so anyways that is the damage on the engine I assume it's because I don't really know. Um, in any case, during shipping, they just the pilot was pushed downward, presumably from a forward force. And I try to diagnose it myself. If you look at the foam here, if you look at the foam, you can see that the pilot is just kind of a triangle. So I was thinking maybe possibly the engine was pushed forward, and because this is an angled piece, it pushes the pilot downwards because of this, you know, angle right here. I don't really know though. I don't know much about the, 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 the dynamics of foam, but that is my best guess. In any case though, the front is really damaged. The tender came out really fine. Uh, tender was nice. Everything else in the engine looks fine. There's a bit of dirt obviously on the sides, but that's about it. So anyways, what am I, what, what am I going to do with this engine? Oh, one thing to mention I didn't, that I forgot to mention is that the uh, engine, what is up with the sun? This is why I should never film in the mornings because the sun directly hits my window. Anyways, uh, one little nice bonus was that there was actually a decoder uh, that I found inside the cab. I don't know what's with me and decoders, but I found so many engines with decoders inside. This is my fifth brass engine that I found a decoder inside and probably the tenth engine in total that's not brass or brass and or not brass in total that has a decoder inside that I've bought over the years. Um, it's a Digitrax decoder. It's not sound, obviously. Um, I can't really tell what number it is. I think it's DH142, possibly. I can't really see that well inside there. But, um, yeah, I always welcome a free DCC decoder. Um, does it make up for the fact that the front is bent out of shape? No, I would much rather have preferred an engine without damage and without a decoder. But, I don't know, I guess it's a nice little bonus. Um, in any case, though, so what am I going to do with this engine? Uh, this engine has an open frame motor. You guys can see back there. There's an open frame motor. Uh, the gearbox, I don't know. I haven't tested if it runs yet, to be honest. Um, I can't tell if it's um, in, a, you know, if it's noisy or not, but we'll see. Hopefully it's not. Uh, the wheel is actually very free rolling, as you can see here. Um, it means that there's no, you know, heavy grease binding up the wheels. There's very little friction here. Um, so it looks like it's well lubricated. Um, so as far as the mechanism go, mechanism goes, I'm going to add, obviously, a DCC sound to it. I do have a spare TCS decoder, but the DCC, the old DCC will obviously be removed and it'll be kept. Uh, the open frame motor will be removed and replaced with the can motor. I'll try to fit as big of a, uh, as big of a can motor as I possibly can, given my limited, uh, can motor collection. Um, the wheels, they look fine. Uh, the one thing I might do is remove all the drive rods and strip the paint from them. I don't, I'm not, I'm personally not a huge fan of, uh, painted black drive rods. Um, I don't know, it's, they just kind of get, they, they added a bit of resistance to the, to the overall, you know, drive of the locomotive because they're meant to be sliding and moving and twisting. And if you have paint over them, it could inhibit that somewhat. And also I just don't really like the look of black drive rods, but I don't think it's a big deal right now. That's a minor little nitpick. Um, the front will obviously need to be fixed, but besides that, the um this is a this this engine it looks bi a bit different from the other santa fe engines because this is actually an a xkmco engine uh santa fe uh, I, I don't remember when but during the time they actually acquired the kansas mexico and orient um railroad and they acquired a, acquired a lot of their engines that's the reason they have these engines and they also have the um 
two tenos, which are <laughs> you never hear about them. But anyways, um, and KMC really liked to mount their headlights high, and they also had a they mounted their um the handrail around the boiler. They mounted it, they mounted it really toward the ends. So usually the Santa Fe, uh, what do you call them? The handrails would you know come in and then circle around the head, the boiler front. These kind of just go straight down and then circle around instead of you know going to angled in and then circle around. Uh, I don't have a good example of that unfortunately right now. But anyways, um. So that's why it looks a bit odd and a bit different. Um, in any case, though, I think it looks I think it's rather cool. Uh, the one thing I do want to change is that there's two things. Uh, one is the headlight is mounted too high. Um, the headlight should ideally be centered, maybe even a bit lower. Um, but right now, as you can tell, it's mounted very high on the boiler. So I'm going to, have to bring this down uh, to about here. I'll, just, I'll just, uh, desolder the headlight, and then I'll drill a hole and then resolder it back in. Um, that shouldn't be a big deal. And in, and uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to repaint the front here. Uh, Santa Fe never painted their front silver. Uh, they were technically painted a quote-unquote tarpon gray, um, which um, it's a it's a gray with a very slight metallic finish, but it's it's more of a gray from any distance. Um, so I'm going to probably be painting it in an owl-clad uh, dark aluminum or maybe even magnesium um, to get a better you know match of the color. It's definitely not this bright silver though. Um, yeah, so, and that's pretty much it, I think. That will definitely make the front look a lot better. Uh, so besides the front being altered a bit, the front being fixed, the pilot area being fixed, um, and adding DC sound, and also a can motor, that is pretty much it. That's all I'm going to really be doing for this engine. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting project. I really hope I can finish all this work before I leave, uh, which is going to be within a week. Um, going to go off to college again. Um, so this will be an interesting project. I hopefully I can, I hope, I don't want to rush it, but also I, I do want to complete it before I leave because I hate having, you know, unfinished projects sitting around, um, collecting dust. Um, but that's pretty much it for this, I guess, unboxing overview. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to show that original unboxing video because again, it was, it was filmed really late and it was really dark and it's just not really interesting to watch. So anyways, that is pretty much it. Um, hopefully you guys will see this engine being repaired or whatever soon. I probably i might make a project video just going through you know uh giving updates out as i'm working on it but i i doubt it um i just really want to get this thing done quickly so yeah so without further ado uh yeah that's excuse me not that <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that's gonna be the end of the video here and uh yeah i'll see you guys next time bye